Hello, Unican Workshop followers. Today, with this fingerprint sensor, we are going to make a biometric attendance system combining the sensor with other electronics components. ESP8266 Wi-Fi node MCU version 3, but don't worry because the system runs on the lower versions as well. I was thinking of using this LCD display with a night 2 c burst, but this wasn't a good idea because I wanted user fingers to be displayed on the screen, therefore I preferred using an OLED display which has a night 2 c burst as well. The last is the DC adapter. In my case, I used a 5 voltage adapter which has a maximum current of 2 amperes. Fingerprint scanner is a type of technology that identifies and authenticates the fingerprints of an individual in order to grant or deny access to a computer system or physical facility. Fingerprint sensors come with six wires. Red and black are VCC and ground. White and green are RX and TX. Blue and yellow are bonus wires as proximity sensor. It has a chip on the back which is in charge of template storage and UART transmission process and OLED is an organic light emitting diode also known as organic electroluminescent diode in which the emissive electroluminescent layer is a film of organic compound that emits light in response to an electric current. This OLED display has a built-in I2C bus which works as a half duplex transmission with two communication wires such as serial data and serial clock. The ESP8266 is a low-cost Wi-Fi microchip with built-in TCP of IP networking software protocols and microcontroller capabilities. It uses 3.3 volt DC. The memory is 32 kilobyte instruction and 80 kilobyte user data. The CPU is 80 MHz or 160 MHz. Here is the circuit diagram of the successful connection of the Node MCU UART connection and the I2C connection. I soldered the Node MCU on the PCB and attached the fingerprint sensor on the PCB with a hot glue. After finishing with a custom case, this is how the circuit was looking like. 
Now let's continue with the second part to program the system and make it working. Beginning with IoT stuff locally, you start on installing ZAMP in your PC for running the project and once this process is successful, then you are ready to go ahead with an external server. Once ZAMP is completely installed, you will need to download the two folders that I shared in the description. One of them is biometric attendance that I need to copy to htdocs. To locate htdocs, you need to open local disk C. ZAMP. htdocs, then copy it there. Then open the ZAMP icon on the desktop and start a patch and MySQL, which means you are running the server locally. To install the database and tables, you need to open the web browser and type in localhost slash biometric attendance slash install dot php. Back to the Arduino codes, we need all the libraries below. the Wi-Fi name and the password, moreover the IP address of your PC here. And here are the steps to get your IP address. Finally, let's see how this project runs. We start on powering the hardware. And once it is connected to the Wi-Fi, we need to add new users in the system as follow. We add the fingerprint ID, which is one. and put our finger to the fingerprint, it scans and tells you to remove the finger until it is successfully added. Then proceed in the system to add the username, email, and all the requirements. I repeated the same process to add the second user. And as you see, both users are saved in the system. The system also has a status which demonstrates whether the student is still absent as long as it is not yet the time to leave. And it will print present after having placed his finger for the second time, which means that the time to leave has arrived. This is the final part for the local host and is a good project that you can make if you are a final year student at your college or high school. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Hello friends, right here in front of me is a new industrial pharmacy cross billboard version 202 
running on two different cores. I started making this product thinking it will take me only a week, but it took me a week and a half to complete it. I placed the order on AliExpress of some. Remember that the 80 mega has a single core, then would you get something that will run two different processes at the same time? If so, then you have the solution for the final step as well.
Hi, welcome to the repair workshop. Today we are going to install this subwoofer amplifier board with the Bluetooth module. The reason behind the installation of this amplifier board was that the current board was very old and couldn't allow me to replace essential components because the PCB tracks were deadly cut and damaged. The amplifier board uses 3TDA2030, two are for high frequency speaker and the rest is for bass. The two capacitors serve as DC voltage filter and bass boost for low frequency speaker. It has also free variable resistance for bass, volume and treble. To install the board, we first need to remove the old one. I drilled the holes to the place where I want my volume controller to be, respecting the distance between different variable resistors, i.e. volumes. I measured but still the holes were too small and needed to enlarge them again until they are fit. Next was the connection of auxiliary and output treble connection from the external part to the motherboard. Next was to consider about the power. Our transformer rating is 14 and 12 volts and we only need 12 volts, two blue wires on our new board. After the power connection, it's the time to test whether the power is safely arriving in the circuit with a green LED indicator. The next step is adding the Bluetooth module that has other features like FM mode, USB, SD card mode and auxiliary on the circuit board. We have two lines output, left and right that are later connected to the input of the amplifier board. It has a built-in SMD voltage regulator which means we'll connect it to a 12 voltage DC from one of the filter capacitor.
I hope you find this useful and applied. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to never miss new updates. Hello guys, in this series I'm going to show you how I made an LED matrix controller board version 1 using KiCad 5.0 with homemade PCB technique. This series is made of three parts, one in which I'll be explaining how to make your own PCB or motherboard at home, the second will be soldering components on the printed circuit board and show it running, the last one will be showing the final result and combining the board with the LEDs where the whole project is ready to be used. Before starting, I would ask you to subscribe and click on the notification bell for the future updates, if you haven't yet. As I'm using KiCad 5.0, I have put the USB Type-B connector in the socket for easily programming the microcontroller with a custom USB to serial converter cable. And on the PCB layout I used two different tracks, one with 0.25, another with 0.5mm square for the cross section. I respected all the connections that would facilitate me adding jumpers and not vias because the PCB I have is a single layer. This is how it looks in 3D. Finally, after having set up all the connections, I was ready to print the whole board connections using the laser jet printer. And make sure that before printing, the PCB should be in mirrored view. After that, I took the copper clad laminate with the same measurement of the socket. I cleaned it with the aluminium coil to remove the unwanted top layer until I was able to see the wanted layer zone. We use heat transfer method to attach the track to the copper board, therefore we will need the electrical iron for the heat transfer process. The copper clad was fully heated around 10 to 15 minutes and got sent into water until the paper got wet to facilitate in removing the unwanted regions. This is how it looks from water. So to remove the unwanted copper substance, I made a solution of sulfuric acid with a half hydrogen peroxide in a single container and dissolved the copper clad in the solution to keep the black tracks which are the wanted tracks. The process took 8 hours. The duration depends upon your solution. And finally, I got the desired and full motherboard. In this process, you have to know that not all the tracks are going to be perfectly conducting. 
So in that case, I managed to use my hot air station to apply the soldering paste on the whole PCB. There are three roles of doing this. The first one is to facilitate the components to get attached perfectly to the PCB. The second role is to apply the solder on the tracks to increase a better conduction. The least is to protect the PCB against rust. As you see, mine wasn't that perfect because of a lot of solder on the tracks, but essentially we'll get the circuit running. And we'll also make some recommendations if you want the very perfect result. So let's meet in the second part to solder the components on this PCB and run it. Hi, this is Jonathan from the Unicane. With the Arduino Nano, today we are going to build a simple circuit that will provide both flashing and fading effects. In this project, I'll be using jet green LEDs, whose rating is 3 volt. The Arduino Nano that will be programmed with the Arduino IDE software. So, let's get started. Since I want to control two different parts, some LEDs from the first part will be arranged in parallel. And as well as those from the second part. have to test to see if the connections are ok.
Then later I'll have to join the ground and two different control wires, one from the first part and another from the second part and get them connected to the microcontroller. Effectively, we are done with the circuit. So let's go to the software part. I'll start with the declaration of pins. Third red pin will be on the output IO pin 3, another 4. Fade delay on, that will be the time taken for fading on as well as on off but in off mode flash delay on that will be the time taken for flashing on and on off 100 hope you are getting it now coming to the void setup here i'm going to declare the pins that will be used as output or input but in this case um, i only have output pins Now, in void loop, remember I'm going to have two different loops, so I'll be calling one loop after the other. I called one loop blink calls, another fed calls, so that we get a clear difference between them. I'll start with blink calls then go to fade calls for int i equal 0 i less than 20 i will increment This means that as I'm declaring the digital right fed red pin that is going to be high, it will provide effects in 20 times. By following the flash delay on time, now 7 times I'm pasting, but I have to keep in mind that I will change according to the line on which I'm going on now I paste but I keep in mind that I have also to change the pin because one will blink another one blink one will blink after the other and again I tested the first part because I want the initial part to be the final blinking part again. Just adding the comments so that you understand it. As I was done with the void blink and went to the void fade, I will also use for loop. Remember when you write int, you can write any word you want next to it, it's just a declaration. So I wrote this value because to zero, uh, if this value is less or equal to 255. That is the number of brightness level. This value will implement by 5. Analog right. Remember, fading seems to be analog, so it's a continuous effect. That's why I'm writing. 
get the green provide the changes that are happening in the range of 0255 the first very time so pressing this part but now I have to keep in mind that the defect now is reversed because now it is from 0255 Remember it's implementing by 5, not by 1. So, I'm testing the same thing because I want it to happen often, like 5 times. I'm testing 5 times. Say it. Uh, here I want to add one more thing. Remember on the last blinking part I had said that I want the initial part to repeat but now I need it to repeat but with the reverse action. Which means that if a red pin is high, the yellow pin will be low at the same time. And again, fed red pin when it becomes low, fed yellow pin will be high. Now I'm done with the software. Now let's see the results. guys i hope you got the tutorial useful if so don't forget to subscribe to my channel like and share to get the new updates see you in the next video hi i built this awesome arduino digital clock in order to be risen into my workshop now let me take you through some steps of how i made it after having the cardboard ready i painted it with black paint and drilled the holes that would hold the seven segment leds i put the glass covered it and now i'm ready to go I built the 7 segment socket by respecting this schematic diagram but I used common anode configuration. After that I made a standalone 80 mega 3 to 8p socket as the brain of the whole project. In addition, I used this configuration for push buttons and consulted the datasheet to know where analog pins are located. The next part is about the charging system in which I used a ready-made charge controller that has a charging indicator display and some batteries. Finally, that's all I did to make it work. You can get the schematic and the codes in the links I shared below. As always, don't forget to subscribe in order to get the upcoming tutorials. Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling Hello guys, today I'm coming up with analog stuff where we are going to replace the dead motherboard of a CRT TV with the new one. Actually, this is a kind of old TVs which are very scarce these days because in some places they are no longer being used. A lot of people 
prefer flat type than CRT and I recommend reading this block diagram if you are a beginner in CRT stuff. During the time I was repairing this deadboard, I found some fault components in the oscillator circuit of the primary side that led to the insufficient voltage on the secondary side, and I was out of the exact components to replace, so I managed to change the whole board. So here I have a new motherboard that I have recently received from China, and it comes with all the accessories necessary to make it ready to be used. The new motherboard has a video connector push buttons the remote control Deflection yoke connector The new flyback transformer And the infrared receiver The microprocessor of the new board is from Toshiba, and that of the old board is from TCL, but that doesn't matter, each motherboard does have the components from different companies. Firstly, I made a custom PCB with push buttons that could fit at the place where the old buttons were located, and I ended up by soldering them. I also desoldered the infrared with the LED in order to place them at the right place as those ones from the old board. Secondly, I started soldering the deflection yoke connector, respecting the vertical and the horizontal coil connection. If you are a bit complicated, try following the same color codes and make sure to ground the high tension coil before any servicing. Failing to do so may lead to death or other kind of serious injuries.
Later on, I connected the vertical deflection yoke connector to the board. And the horizontal connector as well. Next, I hooked up the high tension cable to the cathode ray tube. And finally, I made a simple connection of the degaussing coil connector suitable with the board. And connected it to the power. Then it worked. In conclusion, you shouldn't flow away your dead CRT TV. Just follow these procedures and I'm sure it will work for you too. See you and subscribe to my channel for the updates. In the previous tutorial, we made a simple counter which detects both forward and backward movements using infrared sensors. Now, in the second part, I will use PIR sensors and make the same codes for controlling them. I managed to change the sensors and effectively I am able to detect the body from long distance as these motion sensors are worthy dedicated to long distance operation but considering the fact that they can sense in 180 degree angle I consulted 10 centimeter pipes to make the waves sensing straight in order to avoid the contradiction between both motion sensors. Here is the procedure of how I made the codes, or you can download them on my GitHub account using the link below.
So here is the output result. We already have three people inside. You can see if a body passes to the left hand sensor, the number of people inside increments. And when a body passes to the right hand sensor, the number of people inside decrements. Don't worry if you see some errors, that's because my right hand sensor is not okay at all. I have also included these libraries in my codes, Wi-Fi client, ESP8266 Wi-Fi, web server and HTTP client to get the situation saved on the database with the local web server and printed on the website. To do that you need to know a little bit about PHP and that will be for the next tutorial. The way it works is, when the node MCU gets connected to the Wi-Fi, it prints the current situation to the serial monitor as well as to a website. That's it for today. Consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy my work. Hello friends. This was an LED cross that I made. 
but it was missing some features because it could print only letters without numbers. Earlier this month, I started a second version of a new design that can print alphanumeric with higher intensity comparing to the first one. I began by drilling the holes on a cardboard that I'll be using. The area of the holes have to be a bit greater than the area of the LEDs to be inserted inside. Later on, I started with welding stuff. <laughs> Even though I'm not good at that, but I did my best. On the electronic part I made a PCB with integrated circuits, all the necessary components and the modules combining them with the microcontroller. It was the time to remove all the faults, short circuit and bad connection from the circuit. When everything is ok, after uploading the testing codes into the microcontroller, it was the time to test the first board. When the first board was successful, I attached it together with the second board. All the testings were successful, now keep watching the results.
Hello friends. As its name suggests, this is an embedded system which counts and increments the logic for the forward movement and decrement for the backward movement in a single door using two infrared sensors. this project I used ESP8266 infrared sensors, the browser, and run a simple test on Unoboard. I adjusted the infrared for better sensing. But today we'll be dealing with electronic part like PCB connection and soldering stuff and then for the next video we'll be dealing with coding part with serial monitor for further testing after making a simple test on my ESP8266 I came to see that both infrared are ok Then I started soldering. A male connector was a good choice because I wanted to make a good looking PCB with a single data and power cable. Finally, I connected the two infrared to the case. And 
here is a full PCB with all the connections. One day I sat down and decided to build a simple home control system by using an infrared receiver that I got from an old DVD player. Once a remote control is pressed, a project will perform a certain task. Firstly, I'm very thankful to John Bot Workshop for having taught me a lot about remote control. Though today I'll not go in deep with too much theories, but the practical application of those theories. Consulting the circuit with the Uno board, in my case I used Nano, but by respecting all the connections as that of the previous circuit. I'll begin by recording the three different button calls on the remote control, because I want to control three different places. Remember, you can use any remote control. All you need is to just decode it. Remote control calls differ according to their manufacturers. In order to begin decoding, I opened the Arduino IDE and chose IR test 2. The reason for IR test 2 is that it even shows the brand name for the manufacturer of the remote control. Once I'm done, I uploaded the code to the Arduino. I open the serial monitor that will be printing the results of the codes of the buttons that I'm going to be pressing. You can see here the codes are in hexadecimal and later I'll need to change them in decimal to fit the program that will be controlling the whole project. Or another way is to order the software to give you a decimal code, but unfortunately I forgot that. Oh no! Converting hexadecimal codes into decimal code, here I consulted a sheet of paper to write the codes down cause I'll be needing them later.
then I opened my actual sketch and edited it by respecting all the pins according to the circuit. Hello Unican Workshop followers, today with this fingerprint sensor we are going to make a biometric attendance system combining the sensor with other electronics components. ESP8266 Wi-Fi node MCU version 3 but don't worry because the system runs on the lower versions as well. I was thinking of using this LCD display with a night 2 c burst but this wasn't a good idea because I wanted user fingers to be displayed on the screen therefore I preferred using an OLED display which has a night 2 c burst as well. The last is the DC adapter. In my case I used a 5 voltage adapter which has a maximum current of 2 amperes.
Fingerprint scanner is a type of technology that identifies and authenticates the fingerprints of an individual in order to grant or deny access to a computer system or physical facility. Fingerprint sensors come with six wires. Red and black are VCC and ground. White and green are RX and TX. Blue and yellow are bonus wires as proximity sensor. It has a chip on the back which is in charge of template storage and UART transmission process. An OLED is an organic light emitting diode also known as organic electroluminescent diode in which the emissive electroluminescent layer is a film of organic compound that emits light in response to an electric current. This OLED display has a built-in I2C bus which works as a half duplex transmission with two communication wires such as serial data and serial clock. The ESP8266 is a low-cost Wi-Fi microchip with built-in TCP of IP networking software protocols and microcontroller capabilities. It uses 3.3 volt DC. The memory is 32 kilobyte instruction and 80 kilobyte user data. The CPU is 80 MHz or 160 MHz. Here is the circuit diagram of the successful connection of the Node MCU UART connection and the I2C connection. I soldered the Node MCU on the PCB and attached the fingerprint sensor on the PCB with a hot glue. After finishing with a custom case, this is how the circuit was looking like. Now let's continue with the second part to program the system and make it working. This is a 40 to 8 LED matrix that I have built earlier. is made of 8 rows and 40 columns. The 40 columns are subdivided into 8 grouped columns separately controlled by a shift register HC595 which is an 8-bit shift register while 8 rows are controlled by a single HC595 shift register sequentially. The PCB already soldered is made of combination of electronic components such as microcontroller which is the brain of the whole system, 
registers and switching transistors. A single IC here with these transistors is for controlling rows and the combination of five registers are for columns control. I added an extra microcontroller with the two high power switching transistors that would flash the round LEDs as it was a requisition from the client of this LED matrix. Don't forget that all of these projects shared on our channel are the main industrial projects you can also make on your own to make extra money as an electrical or electronic hobbyist. What is a 3D digital billboard? 3D digital billboards are a combination of 3D technology and conventional keyboards. In simpler words, these billboards use digital technology to produce a three-dimensional image. These billboards are not tangible and 2D. This is why they offer a better visual experience for viewer. This advertising method makes you stand out from the masses. With 3D billboards, the persona of the brand comes to life. Since the visual experience is so close to reality, the customers are more eager to explore your brand. The 3D effect is instantly eye-catching to the public. It also engages the audience for a longer period of time. These billboards can be displayed on any advertising space. How does 3D digital billboards technology work? 3D billboard technology works on the principle of forced perspective. Forced perspective is a technique that uses an object scale and the spectator's vantage point to create an illusion of thing appearing larger, smaller, near or distant from the viewer. 3D Tech combines two images taken from different angles and puts them into a single clip. As a result, our left and right eyes see the visuals from different points and our brain recognizes the objects. To achieve this illusion, 3D billboards usually use curved displays with two faces. High-tech billboards such as these provide a peerless visual experience with everything appearing more realistic than they are. 3D digital billboards are way more sustainable than conventional billboards and impact sales by 107% compared to only 54% for static advertising boards. In terms of storytelling, the 3D advertising system is much more engaging since it effectively engages all senses of the audience and gets the message across much faster. The future of 3D digital billboards advertising with the tech storm taking over the world, 3D digital billboards are becoming more and more popular. Although consumption patterns and market trends trigger advertising, 3D billboards adds have more longevity than traditional ones. It helps the user tap into an existing new world while driving down a freeway or simply walking through the city's heartland. 3D displays have become a rage, especially since the onset of the pandemic, because people did look for things to get them attracted amid the gloomy days. But now, with more and more brands jumping to disrupt marketing and advertising, it seems like 3D digital billboards are here to stay.
Hi, today I want to share with you how I repaired this SMPS power supply, which eventually worked as you can see on my digital voltmeter and the oscilloscope. <laughs> There are some common causes of SMPS power supply damage. Overloading, aging, heat, physical damage, inadequate cooling, environmental factors. And the main cause for this SMPS power supply to get damaged is heat. Where power supplies generate heat during operation and if they become too hot due to poor ventilation or excessive load, it can lead to damage. Normally, an SMPS power supply has three main parts, high voltage section, low voltage section, and the protection circuit. The high voltage section starts with main AC voltage, which is rectified into DC with a high voltage filtering capacitor. After that, there is an oscillator circuit that divides the DC voltage into high frequency pulses to the chopper transformer which works as a step-down transformer to give out the required DC not filtered yet. Then other capacitors are chosen for the filtration of the output DC. The protection circuit gives feedback to the high voltage part on the oscillator either to shut down the passage of voltage to the transformer when there is either overload or overheating. Failure of the feedback circuit may lead to components damage and that is what happened to this SMPS. When I troubleshooted, I found out that the fuse was blown and the capacitor bursted and we need to replace them. I desoldered these two fault components. I took my old SMPS that I used on PC and found the working capacitor and the fuse. After replacing them, eventually the power supply worked.
Results were good on the oscilloscope, but as you know, it is almost impossible to get a very pure DC output signal due to the ESR, equivalent series resistance, from a capacitor that is not new or spent long time in a stock. I hope you found these guides useful and you can follow the same process to fix your power supply as well. A cathode ray tube is a vacuum tube containing one or more electron guns which emit electron beams that are manipulated to display image on a phosphorescent screen. The images may represent electrical waveforms, oscilloscope, pictures, television set, computer monitor, radar targets. A CRT on television set is commonly called a picture tube. CRTs have also been used as memory devices, in which case the screen is not intended to be visible to an observer. The term cathode ray was used to describe electron beams when they were first discovered, before it was understood that what was emitted from the cathode was a beam of electrons. In CRT television sets and computer monitors, the entire front area of the tube is scanned repeatedly and systematically in a fixed pattern called a raster. In color devices, an image is produced by controlling the intensity of each of the three electron beams, one for each additive primary color, red, green, and blue, with a video signal as a reference. In modern CRT monitors and televisions, the beams are bent by magnetic deflection using a deflection yoke. Electrostatic deflection is commonly used in oscilloscopes. The flyback transformer sends high voltage tension to the tube. The use of composite cables was the only choice to transmit analog signals. These old CRT TVs do have a built-in FM receiver that is made of tuner and audio amplifier. A CRT works by electrically heating a tungsten coil which in turn heats a cathode in the rear of the CRT, causing it to emit electrons which are modulated and focused by electrodes. The electrons are steered by deflection coils or plates and an anode accelerates them toward the phosphor coated screen which generates light when hit by the electrons. Monochrome CRT TV, also known as black and white TV, is capable of displaying only shapes of gray. It uses a single electron gun to fire electrons at phosphorescent screen, coated with a substance that emits light when struck by electrons. The screen is divided into millions of tiny pixels but they can only emit varying intensive of white light. By controlling the intensity of the electron beam, different shades of gray achieved, which create the illusion of image in black and white. A full color CRT TV, also referred to as a color TV, is designed to display a wide range of colors. It achieves this by using three electron guns instead of one, each corresponding to a primary color red, green, and blue RGB. The phosphorescent screen is coated with tiny red, green, and blue phosphor dots arranged in a pattern called a pixel triad. By varying the intensity of each electron gun's beam, a combination of red, green, and blue light can be emitted from each pixel, creating a wide spectrum of color through additive color mixing. The brain perceives these mixed colors as full color image we see on the screen. Ushobora kuba wibaza aho iyi microcontroller itandukaniye n'izindi dore ko ariyo iri kugenda imenyekana cyane kubera ubushobozi bwinshi ifite Uyu munsi tugiye kwifashisha screen ya computer tureba ukuntu iyi chip ya ESP 32 
ishobora kwerekana amashusho dukoresheje VGA interface ariyo video graphic array mu bikoresho turi gifashishe harimo multimeter akana gakoresho kadufasha gupima ingano z'ibintu bitandukanye muri electronics na electricity ari byo voltage current continuity resistance na capacitance niba ushaka kwiga uburyo aka gakoresho gakoreshwa waza kureba muri playlist zanje ya tutorials z'ikinyarwanda uraza kubona mo video isobanura uburyo gakoreshwa turi fashisha na ESP 32 na screen ya computer ifite VGA interface mu gutangira turabanza tumenye ESP 32 icyari cyo ubushobozi ifite imikorere yayo tuze kureba n'uburyo wayikoresha kuri mudasobwa yawe nawe ukabasha kwikorera project nyi nkuko tubikesha urubuga rwa Wikipedia turabona yuko iyi ESP 32 ari uruherekane rwa ma system menshi ari muri chip imwe cyangwa se ama microcontroller menshi ari muri eh, system imwe buri mwe ifite icyo imaze ukwayo eh drone yuko ifite wifi eh, accessibility ya wa, ya wifi ikaba ifite mona bluetooth management ibi ngi bivuze yuko ishobora gukora nka wifi access point cyangwa wifi client eh, wifi access point niyo tubona yuko yo ubwayo ishobora kuba yatanga eh, wifi access ku ku ma device runaka akoresha eh, wifi nka telefone eh, nama computers nibindi bintu byose bikenera wifi kugira ngo bibe byakora ugikorwa runaka inanone igakora nka wifi client e, wifi client ni kuvuga yuko nayo ubwayo ushobora kuba yakwikonekta kuri e, wireless e, wifi nkuko mubizi magamba arambuye ni wireless fidelity iyi bluetooth management ni kuvuga yuko ibi byose biri integrated muri iyi chip tubona hano ku ruhande kuri aka gashushanyo Eh, arimo bluetooth module akabamo na wifi modules eh, nano ni kabikora nka microcontroller isanzwe ibi rero bikabituma iyi system on chip cyangwa se microcontroller ikoreshwa muri project za internet of things ni ama project ushobora kuba wa controller nk'ibikoresho ariko ukoresheje internet aho uzakenera internet kugira ngo ibikoresho byawe bibe byakora tumanutse hepfo gatoya turabona yuko eh technical characteristics cyangwa se ibintu biranga iyi eh board cyangwa se microcontroller ni CPU ni dual core eh, bivuze yuko ifite eh, cores ebyiri cyangwa se processor ebyiri ziri integrated muga chip kamwe nkuko twayibonye eh bikaba bikorera kuri bit 32 kandi eh ikaba ifite megahertz ijana na 63 eh na megahertz 240 hano rero iki niki nico kita gituma iyi microcontroller iba iri powerful cyane ugeranyije n'izindi nkuko dusanzwe tubizi Arduino board kuri yo ifiteho microcontroller yitwa 80 mega magana 328 ifite megahertz 16 urabona yikwigeranyije ni nanaho bihuriye iyingi ira yikubye cyane iyi microcontroller rero ESP 32 ikaba yaraje kurikira ESP eh umunani kabiri gatandatu gatandatu yo nimba ni ukane zifite megahertz 63 nkaba ndi gupanga gukora videos itandukanya izi board ukoresha tu ESP 32 ESP 8266 na Arduino tukareba aho bitandukanye ndetse ni 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 device cyangwa se ni microcontroller wakoresha muri project runaka zose rose ifite project ziba ziberanye nazo ni ESP 32 ikunda gukoreshwa nkuko twayibonye aho uzakenera wifi cyangwa se ukeneye internet ye na ESP 8266 nayo ikaba ikora muri mwenizo project 
ariko Arduino nayo iyo ushatse kuba wa connectinga kuri Wi-Fi na auto na yuko arandi ma shields ukenera ku ruhande bityo rero izi board icyo ziyirusha zo zifitemo ibyo byose muri chip in nuko twari twabibonye izi board rero twatubona yuko zo zidaturuka mu Butaliyani nuko twari dusanzwe tuzi yuko Arduino zakozwe no mu Butaliyani uh, witwa Massimo Banzi ariko i ESP yo yatubutse mu Rwanda rwo gushimwa rwitwa Expressive akaba ari gorero rukora mwene izi izi board turai bona neza no kuri block diagram yuko ifite uh, processor ebyiri ari pro processor and AP PCPU ikaba ifite nibindi bintu byinshi bitandukanye nuko tu ture tubibona hano kuri eh, data sheet yayo hano data sheet rero iratwerekana yuko ifite eh, GPIO pins 33 cyangwa se general purpose input out, out, input output pins eh, hano rero baratwerekaho izo I2C na I2C ushobora kuba eh, wazi connecta ushaka kuba wazi koresha eh, turabona yuko and if the mm, touch kuri iyi GPIO pins ya 1233 ikabifite sensor kuryo iyo itashinze ugayo ibimenya gusa ibyo byose bikaba bikora bitewe na na code washizemo iyi ni diagram ya VGA pin configuration itwereka uburyo turabanza kumenya izina rya buri rutsinga kuryo biri gutworere kuzihuzana ESP Usanzwe iyo turi gukora transmission ya mashusho dukenera aya mabara atatu umutuku ubururu n'icyatsi kuko ariyo abyara andi mabara tugakenera vertical synchronization na horizontal synchronization ibi bigatuma rya shusho turi reba mu buryo bwuzuye icyo nakoze na chief port ya VGA kuri ya cable eva muri screen kugira ngo nandukanye za nsinga nifuze ndangije nzihuza na mail to female wires kugira ngo zihure na ESP nifashishije iki gishushanya downloading IDE uraja kuri arduino.cc ukoreshe browser yawe uje kuri downloads hanyuma uhitemo software bitewe na operating system ya ushobora kuba Windows 8, Windows 10 cyangwa Windows 7 hanyuma ukande kuri just download iyi ni open source software so bivuze yuko ni nubuntu nurangiza ku downloadinga urayifungura ukande kuri file e, uje kuri preference hanyuma ukore paste yi link mohano nurangiza uje kuri tools e, board hanyuma uje kuri board manager muri search box wandike mo ESP Mirongo tatu na kabiri. Hanyuma ukande kuri install. Hanyuma uje ahandi se sketch. Include library. Hanyuma ukande kuri manage libraries. Nurangiza uandike mo bitluni. Then uinstalle i library. Ani muge kuri examples bitluni ESP32 lib hanima uhitemo example yariyo yose ushaka then uploadinge kuri ya board 